In this video, we're going to have a look at the optimization ribbon is all about. We're going to look at how you can use it to monitor the performance of your visuals. And we're also going to look at how you can use it to change the way your visuals are interacting with each other within your reports. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So this optimized ribbon is a new option that came about a few months ago and it sort of bundles up different functions or abilities to optimize the performance of your Power BI reports. Some of these features are old, some are new. So we're going to have a look at how each of them sort of works. So I've opened up a Power BI report here, which we used for a different uh, demo for a different video. And we're using it not because of sort of its data, but it's just to show how you would use the optimize ribbon in a context of an already built report. Now, the first thing that you need to know about the optimize ribbon, and it's here, by the way, it's up here, um, is that it's uh, is still a preview feature. So that means that if you can't see it up here, most likely it's still disabled in your preview settings, which you will need to enable yourself. So under file, options, and then under options here, you'll need to go to preview features down here and then scroll all the way down here under optimize ribbon. So if you take this and refresh and reopen your Power BI desktop, the optimize ribbon should be available for you now to use. So let's start by showing you how the optimize ribbon works. So as you know, first, when you interact with reports in Power BI, like here, for example, if I select beverages in this visual, every single visual within this page changes its data accordingly. So you will see that total sales is now corresponding to the total sales for beverages. The sales over time here is showing only for beverages. So how that has changed over time and everything else within this report. The pause visuals here at the top, if I select that now to toggle it, you'll see that it tells us it creates a banner here saying your visuals are paused. Some edits won't be applied until you refresh or resume your visual queries. So what this will do is uh, when you make selections like cross filters or using slicers within your page, the cross filtering or cross highlighting as you expect them will not work. So if I click their products here, you'll see that uh, what it will do is it will create and it will add banners on every single visual that needs to refresh when we made that selection. You can click the refresh button on uh, single visuals individually here to update uh, their data based on your selection, or you can simply hit uh, the refresh button here or the refresh visuals here on the top left to update every single thing on the page based on your selection. So using this is a pretty good way to kind of debug your reports um, let's say if you're having some performance or optimization problems where you suspect that one of your visuals is taking much longer to load than the others, this is a good way to kind of isolate that visual and see if it is the case or, or not. So now everything is paused in this report at the moment, but uh, you can toggle this by selecting or deselecting the post visuals here on the left or clicking resume visual queries here on the banner. So that will just put your report back to normal. We have some optimization presets here that uh, has some predefined options with regards to how your interactivity within your report is happening. So by default, this is uh, selected interactivity selected here, which uh, is what you would normally be familiar with with Power BI. So the cross highlighting, the cross filtering will work as you make selections, the visuals, you know, get sliced. If you add a filter and use that filter, it will uh, slice everything within your page. You can uh, change this into query reduction. If you don't want this and instead you want to maybe reduce the number of queries that you're sending back to the source, you can select query reduction, which will do a few things. So it tells you here. So first of all, it turns off the cross highlighting and cross filtering within your visuals, at least temporarily when this uh, preset is selected. So when you select visuals, the other visuals that is meant to be related to it won't be filtered. Another thing that it does is it also creates or adds an apply filters button on your filters pane so that you can have a way to trigger the refresh only once and not uh, when, uh, when you make a selection within your page. So let me show you. So first of all, like if I make a selection here, you'll see that it's not linked anymore. And if we go to the filter panes here and let's say, 
let's add category here and if i select beverages here you'll see that a new button is now available this apply button if we click that it will filter everything in the page to show that beverages sales and it only refreshes that one time. In addition to these two presets, you also have the option to customize this interactivity if you want to. So here, for example, um, you can uh, select or deselect uh, cross highlighting or cross filtering or change some other values here if you want to. And before we continue to the next part, I just wanted to clarify, you know, why this is important to know and to use. One purpose is, as I mentioned before, is a way to reduce the number of queries being sent back to the source. So if you imagine every single time you make a selection within your visuals, either filter or filtering a chart, every single visual within that page needs to recalculate its calculations, if it's using DAX measures or anything else, based on the context of what you've selected for every single part of your page. In our case, because we're using import mode as our sort of data source settings, and we don't have such a big data set, the changes or, or the impact that we see is not so big of a deal, but if you imagine if you're working with larger data sets, you know, your calculations may be sort of not optimized or it just simply there's just way too much information. If your calculations take too long to load, it means that your visuals won't render in the appropriate time and uh, it will lead to a really bad user experience. Another reason is if you're using a direct query as your source type, reducing the number of queries that you're sending back to the source, which is good best practice anyway, because it avoids you having to throttle that query database that you're using. Next, Performance Analyzer is a feature that allows you to see how fast your visuals load in a page. So, and generally you want your visuals to be loading as fast as possible to improve the responsiveness and the user experience for your reports. So if I just show you quickly how it works, I'm gonna toggle Performance Analyzer here. I'm gonna just make some space here. I'm gonna hit Start Recording and you'll see that as I make a selection or selection here, you'll see um, every single visual or every single item within our page is being shown here as I made that selection. So you'll see um, uh, if you've named your visuals properly, you'll be able to determine which visuals are taking the longest to load, which is here on the right hand side. You'll know who, what they are if you simply click that, it will select that uh, visual in your page. This one is taking quite long to load. You can sort this by duration, so let's say by descending, so now you can see um, which ones loaded the, uh, the quickest versus the, the fastest. So when you sort it by duration, you now uh, will be able to see you know, quite easily which visuals are taking the longest to load versus which ones are taking is the fastest to load, basically. There are many other aspects of the performance analyzer that you can use, uh, like being able to export it and then analyzing it um, using an external software. And I did cover it in in-depth detail in a separate video so check that one out if you haven't yet L lastly let's have a look at this new selection here the apply all slicers button which does uh, exactly that it simply adds a button to your page that you can simply hit apply so that um, your slicers aren't uh, refreshing every single time you select one and if you have multiple uh, slicers so let me show you how this works so i'm gonna just make some space for it uh, here i'm gonna create a slicer here let's see filter I'm gonna change this into a drop-down like this so as you make uh, selections it filters out what we have in this page automatically. Now if we select apply all slicers what it will do is it will add a button that is currently disabled and it enables when you make a slicer selection uh, within your page. So what we'll see is that now if you select a category here, instead of automatically applying that filter into your page, it adds this new uh, bit on the header saying that there is a pending action that needs to happen before this gets filtered, right? And this works um, to other filters or slicers that you add in your page so that you can or your users can make multiple selections and when they're ready, they can select apply all slicers which will apply that to your page. One cool thing that I realized looking at this apply all slicers button is that it's basically just a kind of button visual. So what that means is that 
you can change its properties like you would do a normal button. So things like changing it into an icon or adding an icon, you know, changing its styles, its fonts and everything like this. But what's interesting is that the action that is linked to that button, there is a new action that you can say apply all slicers, which is the same thing as selecting the apply all slicers button from the optimized ribbon. But another thing that is available here is clear all slicers, which normally we would use bookmarks to get around this and you know clear clearing the slicers that we've applied on the page. But now we can create this natively within the button. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make space for it. We're gonna click apply all slicers button again, just so that we have it in the same uh, style. And we're gonna change the action here to clear all slicers. So um, I think we'll just make sure we just change this clear all slicers. So as you can see here now, it's a button that is active because we have some uh, slicers that are you know pre-filtered. If we now click that button, you'll see that it will clear the slicers that we have selected in our page. And that is pretty cool because um, the previous solutions that we've created before was, as I said, using bookmarks. And it didn't really feel quite right, but now this is a native way to apply or clear your slicers. And that's really it for the optimized ribbon. Now, as this is a preview feature, I'd encourage you to kind of play around and see how it works because there are lots of caveats on what works on it and what doesn't. Um, if you want to learn more about those things in detail, you can go to the optimization presets here and then click learn more, which will open up the Microsoft documentation outlining the different details about this, uh, this new ribbon and how they work. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at any of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.